runes shalt you find, and fateful signs, that the king of singers colored, and the mighty gods have made. Fateful signs were sought by Dane, who brought runes to the elves. Fateful signs can be found by sitting out on a mound and leaving the elves their due. Fateful signs are the legacy of our ancestors, echoed in forever as Alfar. In the lore of the Norse, elves, called Alfar or Alfs, are spiritual creatures who reside in Alfheim, the home of the elves. There are references to light elves and dark elves, but for all intents and purposes, the dark elves and the dwarves are one and the same and are worthy of discussion in their own right. The Light Elves are described as more beautiful than the sun and appear throughout the lore as servants and aids to the gods. There are a few named elves in Norse mythology. Dane, who brings the knowledge of runes to the elves, and Skirnir, who is Freyr's vassal. Other than the reference to the runes, little more is known of Dane, although the same name does appear in the list of dwarf names alongside Gandalf, a name you're most likely familiar with that means Wand Elf. Here we have a list of dwarf names riddled with elves. Clearly the distinction between these folk was not as clear as modern fantasy, brought to us by Tolkien, would like it to be. As for Skirnir, he features prominently in the tale of how Freyr lost his magic dancing sword. Throughout the legend, Skirnir serves as Freyr's messenger, go-between, aid, and friend. Freyr is also worth mentioning as he is Lord of the Elves, having been given Alfheim upon growing his first tooth. Even the distinction between god and elf is not completely clear, as both elves and gods are worshipped. There are later English references to elf magic as the cause of various illnesses and maladies, as well as giving the ability to heal. But if we go back to the earliest references to elves, we find that they were tied to the land and that one could speak to the elves by sitting out on a burial mound and leaving an offering for the elves. To imagine the burial mounds that we're talking about, I suggest you watch The Lord of the Rings Two Towers movie for the scene where Theoden's son is buried and placed in the mounds with his forefathers. It is a very good visual reference as Tolkien was greatly inspired by the Anglo-Saxon Germanic people. Why is it one would seek elves in a burial mound? Because the Alfar were the spirits of the ancestors forever tied to the land on which they lived. Similar to the way modern people visit graveyards to speak to the honored dead from their own lives, it is something that all people have done throughout the ages. The myths and legends come out of this earliest point. What was ancestor veneration became spirits of the mound and of the land which became myths and legends that eventually became small elf folk that the Scandinavians and Icelanders still venerate to this day, as well as many modern people. For the Northern Europeans, the elves are literally in their blood. We are descended from elves. You can see this as the elves continue through many English names, the most common being Alfred, meaning Alf friend or elf friend. When searching for the elves, you need look no further than the land on which you live, the land where your ancestors are buried, and the blood that flows in your veins. I'd like to thank all the people over at the Fateful Signs Patreon. They make videos like this possible. You all are amazing. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, please head over to FatefulSigns.com and sign up for the newsletter. You'll get a free PDF copy of the first chapter from the Illustrated Havamal when you sign up. Thank you.